Hello, welcome guys to this exclusive advanced Excel tutorials. We are going to learn Excel in a way you have never learned before. The methodology behind this training would be purely project oriented. We will start making some interesting projects and learn all there is to Excel as we move on. Hi, my name is Tushar Suwarna and let's start the session for today. My first project starts with the student database and a report generation system using some basic as well as some advanced formulae. We are here to learn this in the easiest way possible. Before we start off with the project, I would like you to make yourself familiar with a little bit concepts of basic Excel and let's learn as we go. As you already know, the alphabets on the top A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H all these represent columns in Excel, whereas numbers on the left side denote rows. The intersection of rows and columns together form something called as a cell. Each cell in Excel is relatively linked with the other cell. We will understand this much better as we move on. Each cell in Excel is given a name. The name is also the address of that particular cell, which is used to call up in and use in any formula. Let's look at the cell name of this particular intersection between D and the row 3. The cell name goes as D3. Any other cell F2, any other cell D4, any other cell B2. Thereby we start our project by learning some of the basic concepts and how these Excel cells are relatively linked with each other. Let's start with the first project. So let's begin. I'm going to create a student database system and I'm going to put in some columns. We are going to follow the database nomenclature for naming columns. So the nomenclature says no capital and small letters shouldn't interchange each other. Often we should try and put the names of the columns in the sentence case and there should be no spaces as well as special characters between the names if and if you want to give a space between two characters only underscore is permitted. So let's start with following those rules. So I have something like a roll number, a student name, a standard, a division, We'll see whether the student is giving the first semester examination or the second. I'll put in some subjects. I'll put in some total, percentage, pass, fail. We are going to do two versions of pass and fail. So let's try that out. We're going to find the rank. We're going to do a grade. We are going to do a remark. You can add a few more columns like the GR number, the student attendance etc etc but we are going to stick with this particular routine. I'm going to type in roll number one, two. I'm going to use the autofill feature of Excel to fill in the rest of the values for this particular column. To do that I'm going to select the center of the cell to make a selection, drag using my left mouse button pressed to the second cell, go to the extreme bottom right corner of the particular cell, clicking on the small dot you can see over there I'm going to drag it to the 20th row. Thereby, I have added around 19 students in my particular division. I'm going to put student 001. In the beginning, I had mentioned that Excel is a relatively linked database. To give you and make you understand this particular situation, I'm going to explain how this database linking works. Every cell in Excel is always aware of what is above it, what is on the left of it, what is on what is below it as well as what is on the right of it. To give you a small example of the same, the student 001 which we have mentioned as the student name, the first student name, 
now looks at the column above it, it doesn't find a common nomenclature, it doesn't even find a common series which it can fo follow to autofill the values below it. Now it looks to the left side, it finds 1. Below 1, it sees that there is a sequence, a series. After 1, there comes 2. So when I simply select student 001 and going to the extreme right bottom corner and drag it down, I easily find that the same series as on the left is followed over here. Let's put this to a test. I'm going to put standard 10 over here. 10 doesn't find a series above it. It looks to the left. Again, it looks to the extreme left. And still, it is not able to find any particular series above it. That means it starts with 10 and then continues further. So, if we drag 10 ahead, now we are only going to get 10. Clicking on the extreme left corner, you can see this particular triangle shape structure on the left side. If you click on that, the entire Excel sheet is selected. I can center the entire Excel sheet using the alignment tabs over here. I'm going to mention division A as my division. Simply dragging my division across will give me A in all the cells. I'm going to put now a semester 1 to prove the same philosophy that we did in the beginning. Semester 1, the Excel cell now looks to its top. It doesn't find any sequence. It looks to the left. It finds a 10. Again, no sequence. It finds a 1 finally in the column B2. And finally, it finds a 1 in the column A1, A2 itself. So now it tries and follows this particular series. So if you drag this out, you're going to get something like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So which we don't want in this particular case. So we want semester 1 to repeat throughout the cell. So what we are going to do is type semester 1 once again. Now the second cell looks at the first cell for reference. And if we drag them down, we are going to get the same series. So Excel works in a relatively linked manner. We are going to put some random marks. For the random marks, for the subjects English, Hindi, Marathi, Math, Science and Social Science, I'm going to use a very interesting follow formula called as a random between. This is the first formula which I didn't want to start with, but let's see. Many times in Excel, when we practice, we have a lot of data that we want to create. And in those times, we always find it better to use a formula that can generate some random values. Okay, so the random between formula starts with an equal to sign. Every formula in Excel starts with an equal to sign. And we are going to use RAND and we are going to use between RAND, B-E-T-W-E-E-N, random between. And we are going to put two values in between which the values of the particular cell will be generated. The random between formula works by generating integer values. So let's see. I want any value to be put over here which ranges from 30 to say around 90. 30 to 90. So the first value that I have received is something called as 88. I'll drag this particular formula down. I can also drag it down to the right extreme corner to get a random set of values to this particular cell. Now the advantage and disadvantage of using this formula is every time we double click on a particular cell and release it, a random value is generated. Every time we click on any cell and come out of it, a random value is generated. So many a times what happens is we are not constant with a set of formulas. So many of the formulas that are linked with these particular cells tend to give you a different kind of an answer. Every time we refresh the particular cells to solve this particular issue, there is an other way to go about by removing the formulas from these particular cells and just keeping the values there it is. So these are some quick links that you can start from the very beginning. So let's see this part. 
we are going to select the entire data after putting in the formula. We are going to use our mouse and click on the right mouse button, the right mouse button on the extreme border of this particular cell. So go to the extreme right side border of this particular cell where your mouse will give a cross cursor, a cross hair specifically and then right click on it, drag your data to the right side just for a second and get it back once again on the left side then leave your mouse button. Once you do that you will get a pop-up window mentioning move here, copy here, copy here as values only and copy here as formats only. Now I'm going to select copy here as values only. Once I do that you can see all the formulas in all these cells have vanished just keeping the values there in that particular cell. So let's start with the next formula. So we are going to put in the formula to calculate the total. We are not going to do any strange methods. Many a times I have seen people just putting in an equal to sign and doing selecting a cell, then selecting the plus sign and then selecting the second cell. This is the very wrong way of going about with formulas. Excel works with something called as functions. The best way to approach a particular cell is by using functions. The first thing that we are going to do is the first function called as the sum function. So we are going to type equal to sum open our bracket. Use the arrow keys on your keyboard. I'm trying to make you use much of your keyboards and less of your mouse. So use your arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate to the first cell of your Excel sheet. That is English, marks of English, that is the cell F2. Once you get there, press the shift button, press the shift button and now navigate to the right to the last subject that is social science. It will give you F2 colon K2. F2 colon K2. So the formula says that we are going to add all the values from the cell F2 till the cell K2 to give you a start and an end and the colon represents the link between the data cells F2 and K2. Pressing an enter sign we get the formula giving us value 309 for the first student in the particular total row. All we have to do is drag this particular formula down. For now, you can use your mouse to drag it down. As we proceed further, I'll be showing you much better, better methods of dragging the entire data down and the formulas will be applied automatically as well using some pretty good and amazing shortcut keys. So let's start with the percentage formula. The percentage formula starts with an equal to sign just like before. We have six subjects, so the total going to 600 marks. So we know the student has, that is the student L2, that is the student, the first student has received 309 out of 600. So we just are going to type L2, a front slash sign, which symbolizes the division sign, divided by 600. Press an enter key, you have got something in a decimal value, like 0.5 and 5. We are going to select the cell and in your home tab, you are going to find the option percentage. You can use the shortcut key control shift percentage or you can simply click on the percentage symbol over here. You are going to get the percentage of that particular student. If you want to increase the accuracy of this particular percentage, there are two options over here. One is called as increased decimal and the second one is called as decreased decimal. So if I want to increase the decimal value I by two folds, I'm going to press on this twice. Again, I can double click on the entire right side of this particular right bottom cell or simply drag it down to copy the formulas to the cells below. So that's it guys for this amazing first introduction session with you guys. You have been lovely audience. And I would like to say that we'll be looking up some advanced formulas including some simple if conditions and 
compound if conditions as well as VLOOKUP formulas in the videos ahead. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you have liked this introduction session and stay tuned for the coming videos.